Wow, here and wow, it's been a while since I've said those words. <laughs> oh, so what are we doing today? We are going to start a new series. So, so you want to be a space engineer? Um, I've had a lot of folks asking for like a tutorial series, going into you know some basic concepts and progressing up into some more intermediate and maybe even advanced concepts like some of the building and uh, ship planners and stuff like that. So what I figured we would do is we'll do a normal playthrough. It's going to have a couple of mods in it just because they're creature comfort mods. Uh, but I wanted to walk you through exactly what we're setting up and what the expectations are. So we're just going to go ahead and set a uh, name for the game. Dot, dot, dot. Right. We are going to do this in survival mode, not creative. Um, I'm going to leave it in offline. Go into advanced first. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to set most of this up higher than what you would see in default vanilla, mainly because of the fact that a lot of the things that I do and like uh, you'll hear me say things like um, my general rule of thumb on large cargo containers is one and a half large thrusters for every cargo container. It's because I build those based on the idea that if you go with max inventory sizes, that should in most situations be enough lift for you to be able to use those in that condition. So if you're doing something where you're using less, like uh, smaller inventory sizes, or you're doing things on slower speeds, just remember that this is built around the idea of doing things at the absolute high end. So you'll be able to actually parse that back a little bit to do things more on the low end. Um, leave, let's, let's do efficiencies at realistic. We're going to do the speeds up. Um, mainly because the fact that it's a series, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, doing cutting and paste. I'm not going to turn meteors on, um, at least right now. Again, we're going to do this for, you know, for the most part. Uh, cool down ships we'll leave on. Sun rotation we're going to leave on. No ship size max, no max players. Um, I tend to go about 250 or so on the PCU. That's because of my system. Uh, if you have a higher end system, Feel free to jack this thing up. Again, I'm not expecting to, to get really that close to it, but you never know. If we do, we can always come back and adjust it. Uh, auto healing on, delete, we're going to leave off. We are going to turn sp the spectator mode on. Uh, we want in-game scripts. Let's see, tool shake we're going to turn off because that's just an annoyance to me. Random encounters we'll leave on. Enable oxygen, 3D unsupported station, jetpack. Uh, we're going to leave <coughs> the spiders and wolves turned off because we're not doing anything where we need to actually hunt them. We'll leave the drones turned on so that we have things to interact with. Uh, let's see. Oh, do we want to do super gridding? We'll leave super gridding off for right now, and we'll talk about that later on in the series. Um, it's a interesting exploit within the system that allows you to merge large and small grids. We'll talk about how all that does when we get to that point. Uh, let's turn off the weather because it's all it really does is slow us down a little bit. Uh, so for the mods, we're actually going to go fairly light with the mods. Um, I want to keep the game as close to vanilla as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab text HUD API. I'm going to put the compass in. And let's go with the HUD itself. All right. And then I think that's going to be the extent of it. Um, as you can see, I've got a couple of terabytes worth of mods. So <laughs> um, 
Is there anything else that we really want in here? Uh, we'll go with the older version of the overclocked ore detectors, simply because it makes it easier to find the resources. And I think that's pretty much it. There's a couple of, let's see. Let's go with that. So what this mod does, the ice just got cleared, is it takes away some of the the um, haze on like your view on all of your uh, on your HUD and everything, so that there's no like dirt debris and things. Um, it also helps remove and reduce the uh, the highlights when you're looking at things like uh, access points and LCD screens. And then I think. The only other thing I want is Whip's camera overlay. All right. So as you can see, it's just convenience stuff. It's not even, I mean, the only thing that's kind of broken is the overclock ore detectors. And that's because it'll allow me to detect ore like one and uh, like 1.2 kilometers out or something like that. Um, this is the older version of the mod, not the current one done by SE modder. Uh, basically, he took this this old mod, reworked it, and balanced it for the for the new game. Um, so this one is going to be different than if you go pull that version of it. Um, I will put links for all of these mods in the video description. So if you're wanting to see them uh, for the ones that are still available, you'll be able to grab them there. Okay. And I think that is everything. We're going to do star system. And what I'll do is we're actually going to do a moon start. Um, the reason for that is that that'll allow the things that we're doing to re reflect either a space-based game or a planet-side game. You basically can start on, on, on either location as you want, and you'll be able to use the, the concepts that we're dealing with as we go through. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so... I'll bring you, we're going to go ahead and do a quick break while we're finishing loading, because I'm not sure how long this is going to take. <laughs> and we will, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So, we're going to do a moon drop. Now, the, uh, the folks over at Keen have made things a lot more clear in when you're selecting your initial starting point. So now you can actually see the difficulty as well as things like oxygen settings, planetary gravity, um, and if you're going to spawn near other players or not. So this is information that didn't used to be included when you started. So for those who are new to the game, you've gotten a leg up. For the people who may not have started for a while, yeah, it's changed. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so we said a moon drop, I think, is where we're going to go. I definitely don't want to do space pod or space suit, um, mainly because of the fact that space suit, uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to do anything. Let's see here. So, yeah, we'll do the, I mean, technically, Triton is a, uh, was it Europa used to, yeah, so Europa is the ice moon, I believe. So we'll do just a regular moon drop. Right. And we are going to respawn. Now I didn't build a faction yet. We'll do that once we're actually in game. So what we're going to do is when we start for your initial spawn, you're going to be in some kind of vehicle. Important is because when you're on the way in, you're going to want to look for the discolorations on the surface of the moon or on the surface of the planet. So you can actually see one which direction is that? We are looking at northeast. So it's going to be east, northeast. So east of us, you can see that slightly like yellowish gold color there. That tells me there is actually resource there. And that's just on the moon. So each of the planets are going to have their own system that will discolor. In fact, let's run over here really quick. And so is that southeast-ish? Take over here somewhere, right? So we're going to break out our 
tool. The beacon should be Let's see how. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's that way. Let's see what we've got here. So we've got nickel and platinum. Hey, that's actually a really good start. Okay, so we're gonna just we're gonna create a GPS. And yes, there are ways to create GPS uh, markers through the chat, but we're not gonna do that. From current position, we're gonna grab it, we're gonna rename it, and I myself tend to put some kind of uh, marker on it so I can tell these apart a little bit easier. And then I'll do something like, usually the uh, actual names. So we had nickel and platinum here. So we just use the uh, periodic table for references. And so that way when I'm looking at it, I can see that that's the one I'm looking at. Um, and that way when I'm actually looking through, like if, because eventually you're going to have potentially hundreds of these things. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier to identify which ones are which. And since we're playing in vanilla, I have to get used to this because I've been playing with mods that change the spawn table, which usually means that there's going to be fewer resources spread further apart. So it's kind of nice being in a situation where we can actually <laughs> deal with all of this. Okay. So now we have... So do we have any ice on board? Okay, so we actually have some stuff. Now, when you do any of the survival modes, non-modded, you'll get these uh, waypoints. If you right click on it, it'll give you a waypoint for uh, a faction. So we're going to have it create that GPS. We're going to go in here. And then it will, this is a temporary waypoint because it hasn't been activated yet. You just double click it to activate it and accept it. Um, when somebody, if you're in a multiplayer game and somebody posts a GPS location to chat, if you go into GPS, into the GPS menu like this, it'll show up as grayed out, meaning that it's, you know, it's there, but it's a temporary. So if you leave the game and come back, it won't be, it may not be there when you come back. Keen keeps changing the way that that stuff operates, so, you know, take that with a huge grain of salt. But, okay, so we have a beacon, a friendly beacon, almost 12 kilometers that way. We have a friendly beacon out that way at 6 kilometers. And another beacon at about 13 and a half kilometers. Alright, so... Let's see here. Do we have an order detect? Oh, we do. That makes it even easier. Okay. So we're going to go in here. Grab our ore detector. And we're going to set that to be toggle block on and off. You just left click and drag that down and that'll add it to your bar. All right. And let's go for the closest one, which is this way. Actually, I should check the factions. This will tell you who you've discovered, and it'll give a quick overview of basically what they provide. So, Clang Welders provide vehicles. Uh, you guys, the Mule is who we probably should be looking for, because they provide tools and gases. Engineers our vehicle providers and these guys are RTSR are the uh, ores and gases so you are ores and gases which is good all right okay so what I tend to do is I will look for new things like areas that I can set up a base um, so for me, that's generally, if I'm in an area that has it, uranium, which you can usually find on moons, meteors, or moons, asteroids, and some of the advanced planets will have it. Uh, platinum is good if you're doing anything in space, because you'll need those for thrusters. 
Everything else, what you're really looking for are uh, base, the basic materials. Iron, nickel, cobalt. Um, gold and silver you will use for moderate to late tier stuff. But for the most part, yeah, and the nice thing is is that Keen has changed the game so that you, early on you actually mine stone and that'll give you the basic stuff that you really need to survive. Um, the one thing that we do need to find, though, is ice, because we need that for oxygen. So what I'm going to be looking for mostly is an ice deposit or a snow zone. On the, on the moon, it tends to be the polars, so it'll be either the north or south pole. On the planet, it depends on the planet, but again, generally, you'll find ice, at least the poles. Um, the nice thing is on the planet, you'll actually find ice lakes. Unfortunately, when you're on the moon, you're not going to find those. So, basically, you have to have an atmosphere to have the lake. And we are back. Okay, so, we have slowly made our way at eh, not quite eight meters a second <laughs> the roughly five to six kilometers that it took to get here so now we have entered a safe zone which means that if anything hostile spawns or anything like if you are using if you have meteors turned on you are actually protected around these bases so if you're having problems early on these do give you a uh, some form of protection now up to you on whether or not you actually want to use that protection i mean ultimately you'll have to figure out what's best for the way you're playing um, i myself don't see the problem in it so don't feel bad if you decide that yes you you do want to use them all right so let's get out here now we have our jetpack enabled so we can actually get up here if you are playing without jetpacks enabled, um, all of these bases should, by default, have a ladder on them. Some of them are harder to find than others, so just take a walk around it and make sure that you, uh, you check all the little cuts and stuff, because you never know where you're going to find one. Now, the other benefit of these are they tend to have ice or some way of uh, generating oxygen. They may have an oxygen farm. So again, if you're having problems, you know, and you want to try and conserve your resources, this is definitely a way to do it. Now, the other bonus to these areas are in these lockers. Sometimes the developers forgot to take stuff out of them because they used to spawn with uh, materials in them, like uh, they could have drills or general tools. They could have weapons or ammo. Um, and once in a while you'd find parts in them, but I think for the most part it was just um, things like tools and weapons and then the associated ammo. So it never hurts to check them. You never know. Some of those prefabs still have them. I won't point them out because I don't want the I don't want Keen to go through and pull all of that stuff out. <laughs> Alright, so let's check and see what they have available. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. For these, we actually have to... So they've got a little bit of all sorts of stuff here. Wow, you guys have actually got all sorts of stuff. Let's just take a look at the store and see here. All right, I tend to uh, sort things by price because the stuff I'm looking for is generally in the higher end. Um, so again, it just comes down to what you're looking for. If you have a ship that's docked, you can actually purchase the uh, hydrogen and oxygen as long as you have a uh, tank on board that has space in it. Now, it won't allow you to buy more than you can contain, so check before you come in to buy check to see how much space you have and remember that they're selling this while it's marked in kill liters they actually sell it by liter so what will happen is is if you want to buy all of this um it's going to sell it to you in kill liter but it tracks it by liter <laughs> so you're actually buying for one of these you're buying a thousand liters um this is important because your fuel tanks, depending on if they're large grid or small grid, are going to have different capacities, and the, it won't let you buy it. So if you try to purchase it and you don't have room, 
but you do have the money, it's going to tell you that there was a transaction error of some kind. Uh, and then if you want to, if you have a ship docked here, you'd be able to actually select it from the inventory selection. All right, so it's good to see what they have. And then also check to see what they're buying because you actually have some of this material on your starter ship. Whether or not you want to use it is a different, is a different question. Um, so you're buying magnesium. Aren't you selling magnesium? No, you're not selling magnesium. You're selling magnesium powder. Hmm. All right. Good to know. And then always check to see what they're buying and selling because then there have been times when things that they are that they're selling, they're also buying and they're buying at different prices. So if you keep your eyes open for it, you may find, say that they were selling steel plates for like 110 per, but they were buying them for you know 4k. It seems weird. But it does happen, so you always check the vendors. So there's nothing that we really want. I was hoping that maybe we get lucky and they would have a, a new tool for us on the low end of the price scale, but nope. And then if you're looking to earn a little bit of money, they have different types of contracts you can choose. Like acquisition contracts are just that. You have to either buy, mine, or steal materials that you bring back and sell to them. Um, and they'll tell you how many that they want. Like they're, they're buying 46 hydrogen bottles, which are actually really easy to make once you get going. And they're paying a little over 3 million, which is not bad. Now keep in mind, if you're going to use the, the economic system, the ships that you can buy and the equipment you can buy is going to be expensive. The idea it's balanced around that you have to do a little, put in a little bit of work in either hauling materials around or finding and processing materials. So just keep that in mind when you're you're doing things. All right, but this gives us a decent area to start in, and I am actually going to leave my vehicle here for a moment. We're gonna hop up here, and what I'm looking for is the discolorations of resources coming in i think that is the longest i've ever gone in a vanilla game where i didn't have some form of resource between me and the the first uh way station uh looks like that might be some here Now, later on, you'll actually be able to uh, build vehicles to do this, which will make things a whole lot more efficient. And we are actually at that time of day in the game where it's going to be annoying. So when the sun comes up, it makes things much easier to see. So I do generally recommend that if you get into a situation like this, go over to one of the safe zones, park yourself for a while, um, and wait for the sun to come up. But we may get lucky. You can sometimes see the discoloration. I really wish they would go back to the old system that they used. It was a darker discoloration, so it was much easier to see even at night. And you folks watching at home are probably going, How? You just passed like three of them. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure there's stuff here. I may have to actually wait until daylight to uh, do a good survey. But this is faster than driving the vehicle around. Um, but yeah, you're just basically looking for those discolorations. All right, well, since I'm not seeing anything, I don't want to get too far away from it, from the pod or the base. Not expecting anything hostile to come at, to come eat my face or anything, but, uh, but you will spend a large amount of time in this game doing exactly this, just looking for materials. Uh, sometimes you will find them in the walls of the craters, but 
Unless you have meteors turned on, don't expect the craters to, to be a good supply source. <laughs> what I may do is I may build directly into the wall, and we are running out of hydrogen, so let's head back to our little rover, because I don't want to be out and about and... That's why you want to keep things close by. So you can do that. Now I'm going to check and see how much ice I have. 990 units. Okay. So that means we need to get our base sorted out sooner rather than later. Okay. So let's go. That's mostly east. Southeast, southeast. Let's head somewhat south. What we'll do is we'll head out about a kilometer away from the base, from this base, because that way, if we need to get here, we can get here fairly easily. Um, but it's far enough away that we're not going to run into problems with. Uh, being too close to it and mining and everything. Okay, so if we go this way, and remember the surface drain will throw you around a little bit, so... What I'm hoping is that if we head far enough south, we'll get into the polar regions and uh, be able to get a little bit of ice as well. Whee! And yes, you can uh, do jumps and even on the default settings. Now, if this is going too slow for you as far as like the vehicle is concerned, you can go in and adjust some of the settings. Um, specifically on the wheel power. And that will allow you to uh, go a little bit faster. I am not doing that right this second, but I may. The reason I don't generally tend to recommend it for people who are just starting out is because once you get off the ground, you have no control in this thing. Or you have very little control, I should say. Uh, there is a hydrogen thruster on the, bottom of the th on the bottom of the vehicle that you can use for emergency. But because that uses hydrogen and you don't have a hydrogen tank, that means any ice that you have will be converted pretty much straight to hydrogen. And uh, yeah, that's not a good thing. Especially if you don't have another source of ice nearby. Alright, so... How far are we? Are we? We're about a kilometer out. That's good. Uh, I think we may actually head for that mountain range there. Because that should be the beginnings of the polar cap region, I believe. Yeah, so basically right now what we're looking for is ice. Huh. Now, if we were on the planet, we wouldn't have to do this because, you know, you, well, I should say if we we're on a planet with an atmosphere, you wouldn't have to do this because you'd be able to not have to deal with uh, generating oxygen. You would still need it for hydrogen for your jetpack, but you can build vehicles that will much easier to get those supplies. Um, in fact, the, the, the pod that you come down in, you can actually strip a lot of material off of it, including the thrusters, because there's four atmospheric thrusters on this thing, um, and use those parts to build a small vehicle to get you around, where you just strip everything off of it back to the seat and leave the battery and rebuild it to get you around the planet a little bit. So, all right. Okay, that looks like, yes, that is starting to hit the South Pole region. Um, which is going to get us 
Actually, right around here should be good. Puts us almost two kilometers out, which is a little bit far for new base protection, but it's okay. Let's go over here. Now, one of the reasons why I'm kind of pushing this a little bit is that I want to get an area that will have a uh, good solar exposure because uh, our first source of power is going to be solar collectors and so we're gonna push this just a little bit and I'm thinking maybe that range directly up ahead uh, yeah. and you can see the the ice there in the distance if you look up towards the uh, the compass. Alright, so if we get over this way-ish. What I'm trying to do is do this as safely as possible without having us go flying off into the void. We really don't have a way to recover if we do that, so... Now the other thing to keep in mind is that if you're doing this in a multiplayer game, um, the vehicle that you start with will despawn when you leave the server. So if you're playing with multiplayer enabled, but you're not actually, there's no uh, other people on the server, you're the only one on it, when you exit the server, the server shuts down at the same time. So you, it's generally less of an issue, but just keep in mind that if you're on multiplayer, yeah, there's a very good chance that you're gonna lose your vehicle if you leave, so. All right, so that gets us, oh, so close. Okay, so let's, looks like this is a better approach. It's a bit tougher but it looks like it levels off on the other side of this. And then we can start heading pretty much due south. And that looks like that is going to be a cut in that we can follow up. So you definitely want to be watching your terrain. Okay. Okay, so we'll head up here. Like I said, we definitely want that ice, because once we have the ice supply, everything else is pretty easy to deal with. Uh, we got a little bit of a little bit of wind there, right. and okay. So if we go this way a little bit. Yeah, I think that might be the best direction there. Okay. Hey, we can see ice from here. That is awesome. Okay. That. Go this way. Let's say this is why I was saying I think that the path we went was the better route. Because if we had gone the other way, we would have had to go over two ranges and then come up a fairly large hill. And this, a uh, little bit more dodging, but it was less work. Okay. Ah. Alright, so let's get over to the ice. Um, we'll do one more quick cut. I'll bring you back when we're over there because we're just going to be looking at more of the moon. <laughs> so we'll be right back. All right. So, um, yeah, I think this is the area that we're going to build in. We'll turn on our light so you can see a little bit better. All right. So I did a quick fly around just to check. I didn't see any immediate resources in the area, but like I said, that's not that huge of a deal. 
Um, but one of the th changes that have been made to space engineers over the years is that you can now mine stone and process stone into some very basic materials. Generally, people tell you it's not a the best way to do it because, well, you know, it's just not the most efficient way of gathering resources. But we're not too worried about that right now. Uh, we're more worried about just getting the materials that we need and getting a base going so that we can get everything else sorted out. And I think we're going to build up here, like I said, because this will allow us to get the most clearance for uh, solar panels. We'll put up, probably put an array here. And we have enough ice that we can actually run uh, hydrogen generators, which will allow us to uh, keep us alive when the sun's not running. Okay, so now comes the fun part. And by fun, I mean extremely tedious <laughs> and not necessarily fun. All right, uh, we want... Okay, so that's basically the way in. We're going to leave some of this uh, let's see here right. you know what I am just gonna go ahead and grab a spot right here and we're gonna go ahead and start picking up the debris because we want as much of the stone as we can get come on there we go Ugh. And because we're on the moon, everything, including us, falls slower. So this may end up taking a little bit more time than you uh, you want, but... What you can do is once you've gotten down into this a little bit, like, see, I'm doing kind of a... just digging a pit here. Uh, let's see, you are over there? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just basically dig this area out a little bit. Check to see if we have any stone drifting off. Now there are mods that you can load um, which will make this easier. One of them being the one that I personally use a lot is the Nanobot build and repair system. Um, that one will actually collect resources for you, but there's also an associated mod for mining. It uses this basically uses the exact same system, but instead of doing welding, it does uh, mining for you. So what you can do is you once you get to the point to be able to build those, you basically just point it at a spot and it mines that block out for you. Get you lots of resource very quickly but at the same time um doesn't necessarily help you so we put that into the survival kit we come over here to production and what you're going to do is find ingots and for every hundred ingots that you produce it it's going to require you to produce ten thousand stone or provide ten thousand stone but as you can see, we're getting gravel, we get iron, we get nickel, and we get silicon, which are the basis for the things that we're going to need to build immediately. And then you also get these unknown signals, which should have enough of everything to go get. Now, some people play with these on, some people turn them off. You can turn them off in the option settings, just like you can for pretty much everything else. What the unknown signals are, for those who haven't seen them before, are little satellites. Some of them are pretty easy to, to pick up. Some of them are a little bit more challenging. There's specifically the space ball one that's really bloody annoying. Uh, you try to get close to it, and what it'll do is it'll start spinning, and it'll run away from you. And to make it even worse, when it gets far enough away, it stops. <laughs> Just like... Teases you the entire time. Okay, 
And this one is one of the easy ones. So you can actually get skin, new skins and things for your tools, your suit. As you can see, we got boots. Uh, but more importantly, these have a cargo container on them. This one's in the middle. And it'll have things like money, new tools, parts. Um, and the other portion is... Actually, let's go... Let's get rid of that. Since they gave us a new tool, we're going to grab the new tool. And we're going to grind this thing down. Because it gives us parts. Specifically, so in vanilla... Power, uh, all batteries are built with power cells. When you grind down a battery, you don't get the power cells. You get scrap metal. But you get all of the other components. And early on, these components can be the difference between life and death. At least in the game. Now, like I said, some people won't use these, uh, won't turn those on because of the fact that you get so much material so quickly. Um, and as you saw, you can get new tools, you can get weapons, ammo. So it just comes down to your play style and what, what type of challenge you're looking for. But they do exist if you want to use them. If you're in multiplayer, um, they have what they call strong signals. And those have even better stuff, and they're generally a little bit bigger, so you get more supplies off of them. So, um, but some of the rare, like the really rare skins and things for your suit and tools, those you can get off of the uh, the stronger signal. They have a better chance of getting them. All right. Okay, so we have the beginnings of some parts. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I will actually come over here and any of the things that the survival kit can make you can store in its inventory and so what I will do is I will bring over the basic components of stuff that I get see how we can't it doesn't build it so you can't store it um, so what I'll do is I'll bring over the parts and we'll do that and then for anything that I can't store in there I come over here and put into the cockpit. Aha! All right. So, how much iron do we now have? We've got 84 iron. So we're gonna tell this. I want to make um, about 100 plates. Which is gonna cost quite a bit of iron, which is gonna cost even more stone. Right. So. Now, if you happen to find a spot where you have uh, iron mine, like iron veins, uh, nickel, whatever, you can't actually process that stuff in the survival kit. You have to have at least a basic uh, refinery. And so what we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and call this one here. I'm going to go mine out probably well, not an insignificant amount of space here uh, to process into various material types because we have the stuff here that we need, we can actually get a good deal of uh, material. We're gonna head up here and see if I can find the sun. Sun is over there, which way are you going? Checking to see if it's actually going to clear the planet anytime in the near future. Because where we are on the planet may not necessarily be in line with uh, the solar, with the, the path that the sun travels. So we may not get sunlight over here, and that's what I'm checking for right now. The reason this is important is because, well, if we don't, we need hydrogen power faster. Because we can eventually build a tower that's, you know, a thousand meters tall that basically collect sun for us, but what I may need to do is relocate the base, which would be very unfortunate. These used to spawn in the line so that the, the poles were always exposed, but like I said, Keen likes to change things up. 
and because we're using things like the uh, the refinery or the survival kit that eats your power much faster than just basically driving around in circles so it may be actually in our best interest to mine a crap ton of ice and then take that out because you are there here's a quick check for us to tell us which way it's going so yes it is traveling from our right to our left but it doesn't look like it's Alright, so we'll probably relocate over there somewhere then, so that we're in path of travel. Because we may be on the sub uh, portion of the moon, it just doesn't get sun. It happens. <sighs> Dark side of the moon, right? Alright. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and call this here. I think I will uh, grab a bit more ice, and we'll relocate ourselves to a place that is a little bit more friendly. So when we come back next time, we'll get into the actual building. Uh, or at least get more into the building aspects of Space Engineers. On that note, we're going to get out of here. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. This is meant to be a more interactive series, so feel free to uh, throw some comments down below. This is probably going to have been heavily edited by the time you see it, so... <laughs> <laughs> if there's things that you wanted to see more of, let me know. If, Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to throw them down in that section. And the uh, links to any mods that I use or introduce during this series will be included in the video description, so be sure to check that out. And uh, if nothing else, pay the mod authors a visit and tell them hi. Alright, so we're going to get out of here. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Enjoy your time, and... Uh, We'll see you back here next time for more Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. Now, if I can actually spell the word stone. Yes, Hal, it has been a while since you've had to use your, uh, your voice there. So. <laughs> Hi, Hal. Hal here with more Space Engineers. And uh, today we are continuing the So You Want to Be a Space Engineer <laughs> series. So the last time we ended up scouting out a location, and um, I'll let you know that I did do a little bit of testing off camera. Um, the area that we look that we located will actually get sunlight eventually. So we're gonna we're gonna stick here. So we didn't go really go too far. I've just been mining out a bit of uh, the terrain, trying to get materials together. I'll show you what we have thus far. We have a bunch of stone that's being processed. Actually, throw a little bit more in there. Uh, you've already, uh, how have you already run through? Uh, so we need iron. So you've run through all the iron, but we have stone, that which means something is full. No. All right, so why are you... All right, something broke somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Survival kit is on. Everything looks good. Did we turn it off by accident? No. All right. So it happens. Okay, let's clear that out. Oh, it's because <laughs> silly hell. There we go. And as you can see, the sun is starting to come up over the horizon there. Now, this is important because we need to be able to make solar cells. So we need to be able to make those fairly quickly. Um, the catch is we don't necessarily have all of the parts we need. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start stripping some of this stuff off the vehicle that we can't use, like the atmospheric thrusters. Because we're in space, don't do us a whole lot of good. Now, I mean, in theory, we could probably build a ramp that targets, you know, that 
pushes us towards the planet, get some speed, jump off the ramp and uh, do that, but meh. Entertaining, but not the safest way to get around the universe. So here we are going to drop that stuff off. I think everything else we can get away with putting in drop that. We can drop those. Alright, and we're gonna end up using most of this stuff fairly quickly. Alright, so let's get started with a place to call our home, shall we? Right, so we are going to do... Uh, doesn't really matter on the positioning. Ready right, that two, three, four. Now I generally start with a five by five. Um, this was actually an easier way to start back in the day, but with the changes to the way that uh, you can harvest stone now, the cost of everything has gotten ridiculously expensive. So you're going to end up spending a lot of time in that vehicle until you get your original base done. So we don't need it to do a whole lot, but we do need some basic things here. Okay, so we're actually going to get rid of the wind turbine because that doesn't do anything for us. Let's get... Okay, so oh, we want... We're going to need a basic refinery and a basic assembler. The other thing we're going to need is an O2 generator. And then probably a chair, but we're going to hold off on that for right the second because we need to talk about some things as far as this stuff is concerned. So all of the stuff that you can place like utilities as far as the assemblers, the uh, refineries, O2 generator, anything that's a type of production block can be fed from the network, right? From its from the grid. So you'll have these connector looking things on the, on various sides of them. So you need to make sure you have those set up so that everything can work together for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my O2 generator here and then for the basic refinery, this only has connections on one side, right? Well, I should say on two faces on one end. Now, the problem that we run into is that we want the area that this is all being run through to be airtight. So what we have to do is we have to put this on the outer block because it's only going to block uh, transference of air on this face. So we want that to be here. So that'll be able to pull materials through, uh, from the network through this side, but it also allows us to jump things in there directly if we need to. Now, the other portion of this is that we have the beginnings of a basic assembler. Well, the assembler has a similar problem. It only has the one connector on it. So guess where that's facing? That's gonna face right there. Why? Because then it's pulling materials directly from here. Um, now these directions are bi or these connections are bi-directional, so it's not you're not stuck with it being that being the endpoint. As things produce, you can have a cargo block over here, which will basically capture everything, which is what we're gonna put in next. Oh so that's gonna go that requires interior plate, which we have a couple of. Not many, but that's okay. We only need one. Well, we'll need more, but. So that gives us that area. Now I am going to put a block above it because eventually that will actually be uh, another storage, uh, another cargo storage. And we're gonna do the same on the sides here 
And for you, we're gonna do... We're just gonna do a very basic build, so we're just gonna... Try and keep things... Inexpensive. Oh, that's the wrong block. Come here. Let's get rid of that. Alright. Well, those. Because these are about half the materials of the uh, full blocks. So that's a little bit of a cost savings there. Actually, and for you, we are going to really do some cost savings. We'll do that. And that. Uh, like I said, this is just a very, very basic habitation area. Not meant to be anything ridiculously fancy. Um, I may even go... I may go even cheaper. Because if I do this... That makes it even cheaper, and it technically exploits the fact that these two faces are uh, closed. So even though you have a joint here, uh, it technically counts as being airtight. Which... If we do that over here... Makes this whole thing much less expensive to build. And again, it's really, this is just to get it started. Um, later on... Oops. Later on you'll be able to do something that's a little bit fancier if you choose. But it really is up to you on, the, on how you want to build everything. So if we go... So if we do that, that... We can get away with that. Get away with that. And then that allows us to go this way. And I don't remember if the survival kit builds glass. I don't think it does. It might. No, it'll build displays, but not glass. Okay, so... Solar cell, unfortunately, isn't airtight. But that's okay. Um, we need more stone. Of course we do. We always need more stone. And I don't really need to worry about it right this second, because we need to worry about this stuff more. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take out our welder. And we're going to look at each of the things that we need. We need you and you. And so what we're doing is we're looking at them right clicking to put them into the build planner. Because what it'll do is it'll queue up the things that we need out of there. Um, we really need the basic refinery more so than the assembler at this point. So let's see if we have how much of the stuff we have in inventory right now. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to right click to remove that. Come over here, middle mouse click. Looks like it's got everything except for a couple of computers. 
Yeah, so it's the steel paints and computers is what that needs. And you need a lot more, so. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh. That'll get edited out. <laughs> Alright, so. Um, did we add you? Yes, we did. Okay. So now we're going to come back. And we're going to weld up the stuff that we have for that, which isn't much, but that's okay. Now, here's the fun part. If you hold shift and middle mouse button, it'll queue up everything that's in this list. The stuff that you still need. So all we need to do now is just basically keep feeding this thing stone for hours on end, which is what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to come over here or something, find an area that I can dig into the hillside in, and uh, I'm just going to start mining out. So I'm going to do a quick cut, get a small stone mine going until we can get this stuff up, and then uh, as I process stuff, I'll go ahead and get the base welded up for what we have so far. I won't add anything to it. I'll just weld it all, get it all welded up. So that's going to take me, uh, I don't know, probably like two hours or so. <laughs> Energy low. Oh, but yes, we'll get we'll get as much of this stuff up and running as we can, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 